start by saying that firstly, I have to clarify, I'm not Burmese, I'm actually a Malaysian based in Thailand working on Burma and I've been involved and in, I've been a supporter of the uh, movement for human rights and democracy in Burma since 1988. Now Burma has the largest number of child soldiers in the world. Human Rights Watch and UN Security Council has named the figure of 70,000 child soldiers in Burma. Soldiers tried to recruit Tin Min Nai, 15 years old. What was um, unusual about this case is that he actually said no. He refused to join the army. So, Private Morwin, Private San Koko, Second Lieutenant Chomo Kai from Light Infantry Brigade 586 shot and killed him for saying no. Because this was in a heavily populated area, the case became known in the community. Therefore, the army paid the equivalent of 500 US dollars to the family to cover funeral expenses and then told them to shut up about it. Now, this is an incident is, I'm just telling you one incident to give you an idea of many incidents like this happening around <coughs> Burma. And it's happening at a time when the Burmese military regime is telling the world that it is moving towards disciplined democracy through an election that is going to be held on uh, November the 7th. Now, in southern Burma, in eastern Burma, and in northern Burma this year, there has been a new trend where the military force civilians to form anti-terrorist militias. These anti-terrorist militias are civilians who are trained by the military and given weapons <coughs> by the military, but they are not paid by the military. And they are forced by the military to conduct to conduct patrols and also to go into troubled areas. So if there is a fight, they will be the first one who, have, who has to fire upon the enemy. Now in southern Burma, in one village, 15 out of 40 civilians recruited for this purpose were children. Usually in a situation of transition, when there is an election in a situation of uh, post-conflict situation, the, the local po the population will be trying to go back to their country in order to participate, and this is quite the opposite effect. So, why do pro-democracy activists hate this, uh, oppose this election? Well, the election has gone from being unfree and unfair to anti-democratic. Under the new election laws, parties representing over 84% of the seats won in the last election were dissolved. The National League for Democracy, led by Aung San Suu Kyi, and the Shan Nationalities League for Democracy. Altogether, parties representing 90% of the seats are absent from this election. One of the laws concerning party registration is that Political parties cannot have members who are prisoners, who have been convicted and, sent and, and imprisoned. So if the National League for Democracy wants to participate in the election, it must expel its leader, Aung San Suu Kyi, as well as two, more than 200 other leaders and members. It is like, I guess, for uh, to, to, to have a better understanding, it's some, it's like telling the ANC that you have to expel Nelson Mandela if you want to exist. Now this law applies in the future as well. So that means that uh, even for parties that are allowed to exist now, their members and their leaders must be very careful that they are not charged and sentenced to detention because those parties could be dissolved or the parties will be obliged to expel 
those people who are convicted. So since the Saffron Revolution, since the middle of 2007, we've seen the number of political prisoners double. And many of them would be people who would have easily won an election if they were allowed to participate. If you go along with this election and if you behave well, we might release it. But Aung San Suu Kyi herself realizes that the future of the country is more than her possible release. It's very critical to release Aung San Suu Kyi, but she herself refuses to be used as a bait in this way.